Hi guys, welcome to another video. So this time I'm going to show you how you can use JavaScript to fill the ROM in your browser, the JS heap in your browser. And for this example, we're going to use Chrome because Chrome has more additional features that can help you detect the heap size in your browser. But more details on that in this video. So let me show you exactly how the page works. You, using this slider, select a value here from the minimum to the maximum detected uh, RAM values in your machine. In this case, my machine is 3760 in megabytes. And then you can click on the start button. And what it does in the background, we are actually generating some random values and filling it in our JS heap. Uh, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time because generating the random values and pushing them to the heap, um, it does take some time. And what we're doing in the meantime is updating the UI elements. In this case, it's a gauge to show the progress of filling up the RAM using JavaScript. So we begin with this page, a simple template of a page where we have several controls on it. The most important control is the gauge that you see there, which will simulate the an actual gauge which will fill when filling up the RAM. And then you have a slider to select how much RAM to fill from minimum to maximum and a button to just start the uh, filling up the JS heap uh, on your browser. If you're thinking, hey, how do I know whether this is actually filling up the RAM or not? Well, you can go to your uh, developer tools in Chrome and then you can Pull up the performance more tools tab, the performance monitor. And if you start, first of all, we select the RAM, for instance, in this case, 1500. And if you actually start simulating and have a look at the JS heap size here, you can see the heap size is increasing as the page is running. And then it stops at 1500. So before we begin, you need to know several things. One of the things that you need to know is about the performance of memory to read the maximum size of the heap, for instance. So using this JS heap size limit, we can use that to detect the maximum amount of RAM that the page is allocated to by the browser. So to fill up the RAM, there are several approaches, but what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to fill it up with strings of randomly generated values so we're going to push strings randomly generated strings into the heap and then we're going to measure the amount of the ram that has been filled up in the heap using our randomly generated strings so let's see how this is can be implemented using javascript so the first thing to do is to add our UI elements and I will focus on adding the gauge, the slider and this button here so that you can click and start the whole process. So for the gauge itself, we're going to use a library called gauge.js here, which you can actually just download from the GitHub page for gauge.js. And for the slider, this one, you're going to use the range slider library, which you can get from, again, the GitHub page of the range slider. All right, so let's see how the project looks like. So back onto our VS Code IDE, you can see the HTML page here. And the first element that we're going to have a look at is the gauge itself, which has a div for the texts of the gauge which in this case is actually the text when you see the simulation right here. And then the second part of the gauge interface is the canvas, which will be used to draw the actual gauge. And for the slider, we'll use two elements. One is an input, which will be used by the R slider library to draw the slider. And the second one is the text that will be kept in sync with the values that you select on the slider itself. That is when you do 
this action here of moving the slider, it updates the actual input text. Now let's go to the actual code in our IDE. So in our page, we add a script and I call it ram.js. And in ram.js, I just have initially an init function, which will be called when the page starts. So let's start adding some code for our init function. The first code I'm going to add is detecting the maximum available RAM memory in the JS heap. And what you see here is the detecting using window.performance.memory the heap size limit. The value is in bytes, so we change it to uh, megabytes. And as you can see, I have a comment here that it's not available in Firefox or Safari. And the reason for that is that window to performance of memory um, is only available in selected browser and it's not available in Firefox and Safari. Okay, so once we get the default heap size in megabytes, what we do, we just add it to the page. So in this case, as you can see, the text here will be updated according to this value that is detected. And that's what you see in the text that is that I highlight here. So next we're gonna add functions that will create the gauge and another function to create the slider. I call the two functions init slider and init gauge. And they take three arguments. The first one is the element ID, the second one is a minimum, and the third one is a maximum value for the slider or the gauge. And for initializing the slider, we initialize our slider from the library and set it to some initial value. In this case, we set it to 100 initially. And to initialize the gauge, we'll just use basically the same code as in the gauge.js page with some modifications for the UI element. But the most important part is that we're setting the maximum and the minimum values of the gauge. And then the rest is UI. One thing to note is that the gauge.js needs you to specify labels for the gauge itself. And because we don't know the user's uh, RAM that will be reported by window.performance.memory, we therefore need to generate these labels ourselves. And using that, I specified a function called generate range between the, between the minimum and the maximum. And this function, what it will do is go through minimum and maximum, in this case 0 and 100 by default, and create an array of uh, values in between. So in this case, it will be 0, 10, 20, 30, etc. until 100. And these will be used as the labels for the gauge. So, so far we have this UI page ready. If I refresh, you see that the elements are ready. And now we need to wire up the interactivity. For instance, when you select values in this gauge, then this input will be updated and the vice versa, the other way around. And for this, you can use, there are several ways to do it, but I just decided to create my own kind of pub sub mechanism, where if you change one value, for instance, if you add a number here, it will update the slider. And if you change the slider, it will update the input for the RAM. So this is an init function. We have init our slider and we have init our gauge. Next, what we can do is that we can reuse our set RAM value function to set it the two elements into an initial value. So in this case, you're setting the initial value to be 100 for the slider and the input. So we forgot to add the RAM input selector that will be used to define the actual input for the RAM. But other than that, we have the same functionality working now. And that's basically it for the init function. Next, we're going to have a look at what we're going to actually do once someone clicks the start button. This is how our start function will look like. And what it does is that it gets the RAM input value converted to a number, check if it's greater than zero. And what it does is that it 
updates the class for the button to be disabled so that someone cannot click it again. Um, it initializes the gauge with the RAM value to be the maximum, so the gauge can go from zero to the maximum value. It sets the text field of the gauge to be the gauge text input element, and this is needed to update the gauge value as the gauge is updated, so that you can see the numbers as the gauge is updated. And then we run this function, which we call run perf text. It test it's an await. It, it needs an await because it's an asynchronous function. We'll have a look at that in a bit. But if something happens in between there, then we remove the loading, uh, disabling the button. So we enable it again, we throw the error. And if the operation is finished in the normal way without throwing an error, then we also remove the, the class that disabled the button. Okay, so now let's have a look at the main functionality, which is here, the run perf tests. And before we go into the function run perf tests, let's see the function that actually generates the strings, the randomized strings. And for this, we use the UID v4 library. So if you go to our index.html page, you will see one of the libraries is the UID v4 library. And this library, is, if you go to your browser, you can see it, the description here on NPM. It just generates UID values, which will be our randomized values. And as you can see, an example of a UID v4 is this one. And if you do the calculation, you will see that the UID v4 string is actually around 36 bytes. So in our function, so in this function, what we do is we create an, a loop where we concatenate UID v4 strings, chunk them up into one big one MB string and push that into an array called str. And then we return that array to the caller of this function. And then next, now we need to look at the run perf test function that we call this UID string function. I'll just collapse the start here so that we can see this more clearly. And what you see is that indeed we have this uh, loop which we'll call our generate UID string, right? That's the whole idea here. And then the rest is just to um, calculate values which we will use to update the interface elements with the correct um, size of the actual strings that have been added to the heap. Okay. So there are several other things to note in this run perf test function. The first thing is that we enclose the pushing to the JS heap in a try catch where we can log an error in case any happens. Other things to do is the amount of updates that we need uh, on the interface. So we have a uh, UI updates, which you had defined earlier. And if the interval for updating the UI has been reached in the loop, then we can update the UI. Here, I also write some things to the console. But the most important thing is that we have a function here called set gauge value, which will update the value of the gauge. Okay. We also have this sleep function here to give the UI time to update uh, the UI elements. By the way, you can also have a look at the task manager in Google Chrome to see how the RAM is being updated. And you will see this window here. Look for your tab name, fill RAM in this case. And when you start filling up the RAM, you will see that the RAM actually increases according to the amount that is being added from our code. Okay. That's pretty cool to, to see as well. So in this case, you can see it's almost the same uh, as what we are indicating on our gauge. And just for fun, let's see what happens if we enter a value to fill in the RAM that is higher than the allocated maximum JS heap size. Um, for instance, here, I'm just going to put something like 4400. And then you click start. At this point, let's look at the console actually. 
as you can see if you reach more than the limit then the page crashes yep so that's good to see so you can actually use this page to investigate the crash behavior of your uh, user facing application for instance on the browser or any browser related technologies okay so that's it for this video guys thank you for all the support that you've been giving me in the previous videos and i'll see you in the next one